Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we'll be taking a look at a better way of sharpening your image. So what you might normally see is someone will grab these blur and sharpen controls and we'll do this a little over sharp for just the sake of tutorials and bring this down. And you can see this is sort of overdone here, but like I said, we're doing this just for demonstration purposes. Normally you'll have this backed way off, but what we can do instead is now what I'll do is save this as a version with control Y. And now what we're going to do instead is instead of sharpening the red, green, and blue channel, because of course that's what these colors represent, we're going to remap them to a color space where we can isolate just the luminance channel. So let's just reset this real quick. And unlink these. And we see if we just sharpen the red channel now, you see we get a little bit of weird chromatic aberration. So hit control B to go to the previous version. And control B again. You can see we're getting different results. I'll scroll way in. You see, in this case, we're just sharpening the red channels. You see, it's not really doing a great job. Here's the other one. It's sort of way overdone. But now in this one, what we're going to do is switch this color space around. So this red channel is remapped to just the luminance channel. I'm going to do that by right-clicking on the node, going to color space, and then down to LAB. And so the first letter in LAB stands for luminance. And then the other two are different color channels, which is a little more complicated. But now you can see that really does it up. But if we switch between the two, so control B, this is our red, green, and blue sharpen. You can see, especially if we go over in this hair area, we compare the two, there's a pretty big difference in what you're seeing. You see, this is our RGB version. And this is our LAB version. You can see it's subtle, but it is definitely better in the LAB version. You see, especially we get rid of a lot of color noise whenever we just sharpen the luminance channel. So really pay attention, especially in this area. Even though this isn't really the focus for our sharpening, so you're really getting much better results with the LAB. Now, this is a, a not unstandard way of doing this, but if we want to really ratchet this up to the next level, what we can do is I'll hit control Y for a new version and I'll reset all grades and nodes here. What we can do is actually use a splitter combiner node and be able to use our OpenFX sharpening tools on just the luminance channel. So we'll hit Alt Y and this will create our splitter combiner node. And you can see we've got red, green, and blue channels right now. So you might think we'll right click on this like before and go to color space LAB. You see nothing changes here. That's because changing the color space in the node just remaps the controls. It doesn't actually remap the channels, which I guess makes sense. So what we'll do is just set this back to our timeline color space. And now we'll use our color space transform tool in here. We can keep the input color space in gamma to use timeline. And we'll change just the output color space to LAB. And now you can see this is looking really wonky. And that's because it's directly remapping the RGB channels to R is the luminance, G is the red and green component, and blue is the blue and yellow component. So you see, these are kind of weird looking things, but the important thing is now we have just our luminance channel isolated. So you can add a node at the output here and add another color space transform and go from, and go from LAB back to our timeline. So now we can't see anything that's different before and after. But now if we go to our luminance channel, we can add something like a contrast pop or we can do our normal sharpening. So this will be the same result as before, basically. If we just do that. So you can see this is our LAB normal and this is our LAB with the splitter combiner. You see it should be basically exactly the same. Yeah, nothing changes at all. But now if we don't use these sharpening tools and we use something cooler like the contrast pop tool. And we'll just dial this detail amount all the way up so we can see exactly what's going on. So if we bring this detail size down, we can get really fine details and really good control over what's going on. And we can even bring stuff like our low threshold up so we don't sharpen as much of the stuff that we don't need sharpened. Make it just a little more selective, bring our high threshold 
down some, and I bring the amount down to something a little more reasonable. So once again, we're sort of overdoing this for the sake of tutorial, but you can see we're getting much nicer looking results with this other tool. So if we hit Control B to go back to our previous one, you can see just the quality. It's a completely different feel between the two. So you can also change stuff around. So what I'll like doing is do a smaller detail one first and then hit Alt S and you can drop another one of these guys on and do much larger details. And we'll do the same thing here and then bring this down. And we can even change our blending around. So if we had to make this look slightly nicer, we could do that. If we wanted to, we could still even just put a little bit beforehand. So Shift S. Just for fun, we can just add a little bit of this normal stuff, give it a little bit of a boost in those high frequencies. And just like that, you know, we've got something that takes a little bit longer, but I think doing it this way gives you much better results. So if we hit Control B, we can compare between the three. So this is sharpening just the Y channel. This is sharpening the red, green, and the blue channels. And this is sharpening just the Y channel with obviously a different sort of look. So I encourage you to play around with this and see what works for you. It's a lot of fun stuff you can do whenever you start changing color spaces around and having tools work in ways that they weren't exactly meant to do. But anyway, I hope this helped out. I hope now you understand a little bit more of what these different color spaces are for inside Resolve. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you think we did dislike, no matter what, leave your feelings down in the comments below. If there's any sort of cool topics you want me to cover, I'm always happy to entertain new ideas. Um, subscribe if you want, but, you know, that doesn't matter. Probably the better thing to do is go over to mixedmedia.com slash products. There's some free stuff and some not free stuff there. That's always good to just to see what's there. Also, share this video with your friends because maybe you're not the guy that's in charge of sharpening the image. Maybe someone else is. And you're like, hey, try this out. And they'll be like, I know that already. That guy's just a, just a goob. Don't listen to him. Anyway, once again, I'm with you with Mr. Meter. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Bye. All right. So now everyone else is gone. We'll do some, some post-logo action. Another fun thing I would try out is taking these color difference channels and try blurring them a little bit. So you see if we blur this some, just using these same silly tools, so we've actually gotten rid of a lot of color noise there. And it has sort of muddied some stuff, but it can also be a cool look. So that's another fun thing to try out. It's probably not a technically recommended thing to do, but I think it's a pretty cool thing for getting much more interesting looking images. As you can see, we're changing the color like hardly at all, but we're doing all sorts of interesting things with the contrast of the image just by sharpening it. And that's a lot of using these larger details on the contrast pop tool. So I think this is a really neat way to make stuff look neater. Because I think this is a much more interesting image than this. And it's not like over sharpened. We could obviously, you know, do some nice stuff of having this in a layer mixer node. Or Shift S and Alt L. And let's go ahead and switch these two guys around and bring this here and this there. And we'll add a little circle qualifier or not. We can be cool. And just soften this out some. Oh, this is actually interesting. Look at that. No, huh. not anything we need to worry about. But there we go. Now we aren't sharpening our background at all. We're doing any of the weird contrast stuff, so we're getting a really nice engaging look there. And it's even less obvious than before. So my computer is not having fun doing OBS and doing this at the same time. So once again, I'm at Theo with Mr. Media. We have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.